Good morning. My journey as IPS officer started from National Police Academy. And as happens everywhere, the most frequently discussed topic at that time in National Police Academy and most frequently debated and taught topic was how to change the perception of people about police. How to lift the sagging image of police in the eyes of common man. And I'm not surprised that even today, after 32 years, this is the most debated topic in all forums around us. There are historical reasons for low image of police. All of us know that Britishers, British people used police to suppress and oppress common man. They used them for the selfish ends. And that's why the negative connotation attached to police. But even after independence, you'll all agree, all the mothers in India used police to threaten their children when they didn't drink milk or when they didn't listen to her. And if mothers were doing that, can fathers be behind? At least in North India and villages I know, when the child didn't study well, the father would say, listen, if you don't study well, the option will be to recruit you in the police. Because police happen to be the least favored profession. And of course, how can we forget the Bollywood, which always portrays police in a comic character, as a comic character, and always portray, portrays police in a with the negative connotations. So the image of police have continued to be negative all over the years. But I think, how long can we enjoy this luxury of blaming British, even after 70 years of independence? How long can we keep? Uh, blaming the third parties for a low police image in the eyes of the public. It's high time that we look into ourselves, we introspect, we think what's gone wrong, why we have not, despite the fact that policemen work hardest in one of the most demanding circumstances, why we have not been able to raise the sagging image of police. I have been conducting not only me, a lot of police officers have been conducting conferences, police conferences, press conferences, uh, releasing advertisements, talking about our achievement based on crime statistics. Politicians use crime statistics to tell, listen, crime statistics are gone low, so you must be feeling safer. And somewhere I asked two questions to myself. Do crime statistics reflect the ground reality? in the society? And second, do crime statistics actually matter to common man? An answer to both the questions was no. Let's talk about crime statistics. We all know how difficult it is to register an FIR in a police station. And the statistics say that not more than 20% of the complaints which people would like to register in the police station actually enter the police station. Why? Because there is a gatekeeper sitting in every police station, which is the inspector in charge of that police station. He decides which complaint goes into the system, which complaint doesn't go into the system. And these complaints become a part of FIR. And these FIRs are the pillars of our crime statistics. So only 20% of the complaints actually get reflected into crime statistics, and we always measure our performance on the basis of these crime statistics. Does it reflect the reality on the ground? No. The second question, does common man even bother about these crime statistics? Let's take an example where a police officer is saying, listen, this year the crime has come down from 300 to 200. Thefts have come down from 200, 300 to 200. And a common man seeing this says, listen man, I don't care. There was a burglary in my house, it has not been detected. Or a woman who is watching this press conference thinks, listen, when somebody was stalking me or molesting me in a common place, I called police station and no one turned up. Or, a, or an old person thinks, listen, when I rang up police station in the mid of night that my neighbor is blaring loudspeaker and I can't sleep, the police didn't come. These are the factors which matter to common man. So crime statistics actually don't matter to common men. 
So if crime statistics do not make or break our image, then what matters to a common person? And I had thought of four things. And I am sure all of you will relate to it. Because only 5% of the population visits a police station in their entire lifetime. Whereas almost 100% of you and all of you among uh, all the people sitting here would have experienced this. The first question the common man asks a police, police department is, when I, when I was in distress and when I rang up police station, after how many calls my, after how many rings my call was lifted? Then how did the person sitting at the other end answer me? How empathetic or sympathetic was he to my problem? How fast the police came to the spot where I was having problem? If they reached the spot, if at all they reached the spot, what did they do after reaching there? And if I was taken to police station, how long it was before my complaint was registered? These are the factors common man is worried about. Does any of these statistics enter our crime statistics? No. I'll give you another example. All of you would have experienced that. You are driving and you are flagged by a police officer. And he says, listen, you have jumped a light. You don't know. You say, okay, it's your word against my word. I say, no, but you are saying, yes, I have no option. Sometimes these policemen on the streets are like uh, street bureaucrats with huge amount of discretion. Whatever he says is final. And he says, listen, pay 500 rupees. You don't know whether the fine is 500 or 100. There is no transparency on the system. I will give another example. And this is what makes or breaks the image of police. I'll give another example. You are at your home and you receive a violation ticket. It says you had on that date you had violated uh, signal light. You don't know. There is no way of finding it out. That is a lack of evidence and you have to obey by the orders of the rule. I'll give you another example. All of you would have experienced it. Everyone in your lifetime requires a small piece of paper from police, what we call, what we call as police verification. And it may be for your job, it may be for your passport, it may be for a visa, it could be a permission for procession, you want to do a function in college, you want police permission to put a mic. And after you applied, how many trips you had to make to police station to see whether it's ready or not? Four times, five times. These are the statistics which matter to police. And we have been measuring performance of police on the basis of those 5% of the people who enter police station register FIR and forgetting these 95% of the people who actually require police help on the, stay, on, the, on the spot where they are in distress and they have nothing to do with the crime statistics. Friends, so in 2008, when I became uh, chief of traffic in Bangalore, the first thing I did was to introduce blackberries and we were the first one in the country to introduce blackberries. And uh, you would have seen, and you can actually relate, before that, these were the kind of chalans which police will issue. Can you read what is written there? He would scribble something which only he could read or the God could read. No one else could read. He would put an amount which you don't know whether that is the correct amount or if he is fleecing you. And more, over and above, he would charge some money, put in his pocket, you not knowing whether that money goes to government treasury and go, or go, goes to his own pocket. And we replaced it with, by this kind of receipts. We replaced it with the blackberries, where all the police officer used to do it, enter your vehicle number, enter your offense. And these were the blackberries which were connected with the central server. Immediately the amount will come immediately, uh, automatically. There was no discretion, there was zero discretion with the policeman and you would pay the amount. You knew that the amount is going to treasury and not to his pocket. This kind of change brought a huge impression in the minds of citizens. Overnight we saw that the people started reacting to policemen very positively because there is a typical stereotype image of policemen, traffic policemen as a lati wielding semi-illiterate fellow standing there to collect money and harass you. And with the blackberries in their hand, the image totally transformed as a tech-savvy policeman who was transparent, 
who was polite. There was no scope for an argument because there was no discretion with the policeman. This was the first change which I introduced in 2008. And then, next year, next year, we went to stage two. When you receive a notice, we started uploading the photo of that violation on the website. So you could enter a Chalan number and actually see the violation. And once you paid the amount, that would get deleted. This was the kind of effort which we started as an evidence-based enforcement to the public so that they trust what they are paying, paying, actually they need to pay. Come 2012, when I became the in charge of police computer wing, and that was the time when I was made the nodal officer for delivery of services to citizens. Government enacted a law saying guarantee of services to citizens, and it identified about 200 services, which we said we will deliver to all of you within a time span. And if we don't deliver it, you can actually claim compensation. So being nodal officer for police, we identified 21 services. And what were these services? These services were mostly a piece of paper. As I said, a police verification, which you need for passport, visa, for your uh, employment, for your internship, if, uh, or it could be a license for a procession, anything. And we said, listen, we are going to deliver these services within a fixed time span. How is it possible? It's not possible without leveraging technology because the size of the problem is so big. So we were lucky that Karnataka was inter inter internet worked. All the police stations, all police stations were already con connected. So we started delivering these services through computers. And to reduce the pain of people, before that, when they used to apply, they had to Usually you have to pay a 200 rupees or 300 rupees fee for each of the services. And you'll go to a bank, deposit it, take a uh, chalan, come to the commissioner's office, apply. And after that you will keep going to the police station. Is it ready? Is it ready? Is it ready? No. We said let's reduce this pain. So we created payment, gate, payment gateways and SMS gateways. Payment gateways are very simple. You don't have to go to any bank or any treasury to pay the amount, you could pay the amount online and actually apply the, uh, with the application. But when you applied the application, we started triggering an SMS, system automatically triggered an SMS saying a GSC number, that your, this was a 10-digit GSC number, guarantee of service to citizens, that your request for a service has been received and we would give this 10-digit number. And after that, you don't have to follow it every day with the police station. When the service was ready, you couldn't follow it because it would anyway not go physically. It will go over the network through computers. And when the service was ready, another message would come. Listen, your job verification report against this GSE number is ready. Please come and collect it. This kind of promise is the one which will change the image of public. Does this, do these statistics ever get reflected in our crime statistics? No. I'll give you another example. In 2017, when I took charge as Commissioner of Police, the first thing I did was dial 100 and Suraksha app. I'm sure many of you would have experienced this. You are in a public place, you are in distress. Somebody is creating a nuisance. Somebody is trying to um, uh, molest you. You can't remember the police station phone number at that point of time. You can't remember an inspector's number at that point of time because you are under distress. All over the world there is a single number. London runs on 999. America runs on 911. So we created this number 100. The moment you rang up 100 number, they would lift the call and ask you where you are, where the problem is. And the moment your call was received, before the person receiving end could keep the receiver down, you would get an SMS. I have, we have received your CFS call for service and the vehicle would be on the way. And the moment vehicle got dispatched, you will receive another SMS saying that vehicle number so and so is on the way, it will be there. But we went to a different level. I realized that even dialing 100 may be difficult when you are under, under distress. So we brought this Suraksha app. What was Suraksha app? All you have to do is press a button and then 
when you have downloaded Suraksha app, you would have given two numbers, two phone numbers belonging to your near ones and dear ones. And immediately the message will go to your near ones and dear ones that you are in distress. They would also know your location and connect, it, connect you through a Google map where you are. But simultaneously the distress call will always also go to the control room. And control room need not ask you what kind of problem you are in, where you are. Because when you are in distress, suppose you are moving in a dark road, can you explain where you are? You can't. It's difficult. But in this case, control room knew your location through Google because the app had that facility. And they won't even ask you what kind of problem. The Hoysala will come to you and give help to you. So these were the things which I did once I became commissioner of police. And then what we found, that of every 100 call which we received, we were receiving almost 6,000 calls a day. And we were attending every call within four to five seconds, picking up every call. Before we started, I gave a slogan of 15-15. That means we will pick up every call in 15 seconds and we will reach every spot on an average within 15 minutes. When I left, we were picking every call within four to five seconds. That means two to three rings and reaching every spot within 17 to 18 minutes. So when we analyzed all the data, we realized that out of every 100 calls, 85% of the calls did not require you to come to police station. The problem was solved the moment police officer or policeman or hoysala, what we call emergency response vehicle, reached there. In 10% of the cases, there was need for more higher officer or more policemen. Only in 5% of the cases, you had to go to police station and register an FIR. 5%. And what does it mean? That means 95% of the distress which people experience in their day-to-day -day life does not enter the crime statistics at all. And all of our resources in the last seven decades have been focused on this 5% because these 5% get converted into FIRs and therefore crime statistics. Friends, I know that these kind of measures where we are empowering citizens to connect to the police through control rooms, through social media, through WhatsApp, through phones, will increase the crime statistics. Maybe the crime will increase, maybe it will double, triple, or even quadruple. But I am of the fee, uh, opinion that it's not the crime statistics which make or break the image. It's a response statistics and not the crime statistics. And clubbed with transparency, which makes or breaks the police image and this is the solution to better the police image. Thank you.